I'll call the meeting to order at six o'clock. First, I'll uh, I'm going to do the board reorganization, and I'll turn the meeting over to Brian. He can run this part. Okay. First nominations for chair. Looking for. A I nominate Bob Beeman for chair. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So done. I'll turn it back over. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> do we have nominations for vice chair? I nominate Chris Town. Second. I have a nomination and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. You Next something. is uh, department head liaison. <clears throat> we'll put that piece of paper in front of us. Do you want those individually? Or? Uh, well, let's discuss it. Is everybody happy doing what they're doing or do they want to do something else? I'm happy with the police. Brian, happy you're the fire? Mind. Yep. I'm happy with the rescue. Eric? Yep. I'm fine. Anyway, Chris? Yep. Let's um, make a motion that we approve them as they are. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I was wondering if, oh, I guess, okay. I wonder if I can give give my work, my home number too. Sure. Um, should I give it to Erica? Okay. Yeah. So passed. Right All right. So do we have to do anything about the, where we, the papers that we use and where we post the thing or? No, because it didn't change. It didn't change. Right. So we don't we have to. That, it was a change in, when you're ready to meet your schedule. That's right. So the, the, the posting there for takes care of the posting for it, and the meeting schedule does not change, so it'll stay. <clears throat> okay, next. Dan, are any changes in the agenda? Yes, please. Um, could we add, um, utilize um, fire building fund uh, for a gas meter and delete the highway mileage certificate? Okay. All right, approve minutes. Approve the minutes of February 25th, 2019. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, the beginning of it. it says Bob Beeman, I'll call the meeting to order. Right, I was not here. <laughs> you were not here. <laughs> Could have done it via Skype, probably. Well, the meeting got done really early. We know about yeah. it. <laughs> so that'll say Brian. That's, yes. not, that's not nice. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? Also, there's just a typo under new business, uh, bullet three, it's except is spelled wrong. So noted. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next, community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Hearing none. Liquor control. Make a motion to run the liquor control board. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. <clears throat> Sarah. So there's three renewals. Um, Coffee Golf Corporation. 13 LLC, which is uh, Moves and El Toro, are the three uh, renewals. I have a question, Sarah. <clears throat> it says El Toro, no outside consumption? Yes, because they um, didn't send in their application. They thought that they sent it directly to the DLC. So um, I will be presenting that in a future meeting. Okay. Okay. So tonight there's not. Okay. Okay. It's kind of cold out there. Yeah. So do I have a motion regarding these three? <clears throat> so moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Now special event yeah, consumption. Yeah, I don't know if you want to come out of liquor control do it later after. 
Uh, because they're also further on the agenda about using the Oxbow for, um, and I don't know if you want to discuss the event before liquor or liquor before the event. <laughs> well, do we, if we approve this, we don't have to be in liquor control to approve <coughs> this part of it. I don't know. Right. I would think that you would have to be as active as a member as the Board of Liquor Control to approve the liquor. Well, let's do that one now, then. Let's do the... I'll make a motion that we both approve both of those permits for June 30th and August 24th, <coughs> contingent upon the permits being granted later in the meeting. Second. Any further discussion? Just so for everybody knows, um, the Chief did look at those, and he has absolutely no problem with them. You know, they've done a great job of running those events. Um, thank you. On the application, we've asked for a one-hour extension of noise for the Oxbow Music Festival on August 24th. I saw that, 11 o'clock instead of 10, right? Exactly. Um, would that be possible? <clears throat> it's okay with me, yeah. seeing as how you haven't had any issues in the past. We have done it the last two years, um, issue-free. So we'd like to do it again. You've been until 11 o'clock the last two years, or no? Yes. Okay. Yes, I thought it was. When the chief looked at it, he said, you looked at it. Okay. Okay. Tommy, what do you think? You think it's a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. I can't think I have to look at <clears throat> No bouncy house, though. No bouncy house. No bouncy house. No bouncy house. <laughs> okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Thanks, Tom. Make Thank a motion to not look at control. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. <coughs> so next, now you do, you did the, now we're going to do the fee structure. Yes. <clears throat> okay. What do you say, Dan? The proposal there, Trish has done a lot of work on, on this and just did some research um, for what various towns were doing. So, and we would suppose that this would begin July 1st of this year. And once again, this fee structure is, is just to help us offset some of the expenses that we have for maintaining, you know, as far as um, you know, we try to, to buy material to stay in the pavilion every couple of years. Just some of those things that we're doing down there. Like, Offsets on those costs. They're expensive. You know, yeah. you guys can all imagine what it costs to stay in anything. Mm -hmm. You know, fifteen hundred dollars, and the Brian's crew did it last time. But it, it's expensive. And so you know, we what we did is we looked around. I looked around at other parks around. This is on the low end of other parks around, to be honest with you. But I felt like we're okay with this. You know, we raised enough money, so we could do some least minor repairs every couple of years, you know, you bank a little money and, you know, every two years or two and a half years we have to state it. We don't have other equipment that we have big expenses to take care of. The community gardens take care of their own, they, you know, they raise their own funds, uh, they're putting a shed down there right now, and so it's sort of a separate entity altogether. And we want to keep it affordable. We want people to use that park. Trisha, do you, do you have an idea of how many times it's rented a year? Erica? Um, I don't know, maybe six. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Half a dozen, yeah. between half a dozen and a dozen, where we have an event that will probably meet this criteria, where they they really want to come in and they they, you know, we have two you know in front of you tonight. Um, yeah, we'll have a wedding reception every now and then. You know, um, Union Bank has used it. Copley. Hospital has used it. I think they used it, um, and then Green Mountain Support Services is scheduled to use it. Yeah, then we have them. Um, who had that big kind of yard sale, garage sale? That was them. That Green was them. So, you know, half a dozen between a dozen and scrum. And there's more and more people, and they better use it in, you know, every year. So, um, but once again, it's, it's not a lot of money that we're going to bring in, but it will help us offset some of those things that we do need to maintain because we don't. Think no, we'll spend big money later. Tonight. Especially when they're asking to use the whole park, or they're asking to use a specific area of the park. You know, I think we've all had this discussion before, where you know it's different if you want to have a yoga class. You don't really care where it is in the park. You know, whether it's down by the river or anywhere specific. But these people, like these events, all are saying, "I need this area." 
you know, and most of them are includes size area. So some of it could be like uh, the grounds could get dug up or have to be maintained mm -hmm. too. And that's why we they take it deposited. I, mean, I know we've never used it. And you know we're doing this new uh, my rec. You know the new program. Mm -hmm. yeah. This all could go right through this program. It's it's really kind of a cool thing. People could see when the park is <coughs> open. You know they still have to come before you. You know what I mean it's all on approval basis, but yeah. it will it will streamline this. <coughs> well, the money's going to be kept in a in its own line item in the budget such that if there are yeah there's already an income line item that's um, uh, recreation facilities income if you will we budgeted two thousand dollars because we just wanted to put something in there we didn't know how much we get but there is already a budget line item for that okay starting for next fiscal year yeah starting July one okay and the ask the other question i have is how do we enforce this? Well, that's when they come to Erica and they sign up to use it. That's when they come to Erica and sign up to use it. Right. I'm asking about the times that we discovered that there are people just going down there and doing their thing without having come through the town offices. What Most times they call. You know, there's a good thing through Tricia, so they'll call me or they'll drop us an email and then I'll evaluate them or just based on a case by case. And so I, you know, I'll call them and contact them and say, what are you really looking to do? You know, if, there, if somebody just like the yoga class is a good example, we worked with them last year. You know, they just want to be able to go down there if the weather's nice and have a yoga class by the river. I mean, big thing for me when I look at that are do you have insurance? Right. You know, those types of things so that they're covered under those. Right. Um, the bigger events, you know, then do we make them fill out the application and come in front of the board for approval. So but if it's just something small or you've got a little gathering of people or whatever and they're not looking to say, gee, I want the pavilion and I need it from 12 to 2 on this date, then that's why I make them come in front of you. Okay. There's just, groups that use it for launch regularly. Yeah. Just yeah. so you know. Right. Well, this, this, my concern is that if, if we have now a fee structure in place and the folks who are upfront and honest come to us to participate in that fee structure, if we discover someone who's down there using it and not having come through here first, I want to know that there's a fairness built into this such that, you know, what's the deterrence? There is. There is. I think we do a pretty good job. And this is why, Eric, I have to be honest with you. I've asked Erica for every application that comes through her desk. I'm here in town. You know, I wander around a lot. I talk to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I promote these events that these people are having. They're part of our community. And that's really why I've asked for it. So I know. You know, when people didn't have keys to get in one morning at 7 and couldn't get through the gates, I don't think they called any of you, but I think they called my house because they said, oh, Tisha, she does the park. She'll go down and open the gate. You know, that kind of thing. I, I'm pretty in touch with what's happening down there. I get down during the week, you know, I walk down. So I, I think, you know. My, my point isn't about catching them. My point is what we do if we catch somebody down there. I'm really not beating on this because I know there are folks that go down there with a, that, that are organized and they set up shop because they're just a small group. Mm -hmm. But the yoga class has approached us and they are willing to participate with the fee schedule piece mm -hmm. of this and what's fair is fair. So if we find somebody down there and they have not used the fee schedule, is there anything in place as a deterrent for that kind I of stuff? I think we tell them. We tell them that there's a fee schedule and they have to go by that. You know, give them a warning. If this goes through right here. Let's start putting it out to our public. Okay. This is what it is. You know, a lot of it is just straight knowledge. Put it on I don't front think you're going to find people that are trying to sneak around it. That is really going to be a group more than five people. But I think it's our job to educate our public. Yeah, we put it on social media, or regular media. Right, and you know, like the application to use the park will have to completely change now. What's our requirement if you're going to have a big event? Like how many portalettes should Tommy have when he has these events? Okay. And I mean, there's all the figures out there, but I think that's when we start to be doing the application and put a fee schedule. We make sure that we catch, because those were the kinds of things that I've heard, you know, four years ago. Well, how many portalettes do I have to have? Well, I didn't think I was one, so tell how many portalettes you need to have. I, I had no idea. Right. But. <clears throat> okay, do we need a motion? Yes, please. Make a motion to approve the fee structure for Oxford Park, <coughs> effective July 1st, 2019. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? So this has got a date on it? Yeah. Is that in when? July? Uh, July 1st, 2019. And for, <coughs> what did I say? For the event to come before that. 2019. 
Tell me at two events, once before, once after. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Is it one like for a year or just until we? I think you know we'll keep evaluating it and see how it goes. This is a, we've we kicked this yeah. around for a number of years trying to get something in place to do this. You know this year, you know we should have the bathrooms in place. So I think that's another piece of facilities that we'll have down there to do it. I think once we the more and more that we accomplish down there, I think the more and more we'll see more requests. Um, so this gives us a baseline. It gives us a baseline to see how well it works now. Just starting some options, I think. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? So, so pass. One that I was curious about the extension of the one hour noise. So the, uh, the police department has that information. All yeah, Richard knows on. that. I know he did it last year too. Okay. And Richard was fine with it as long as it's not a, an issue. That's what I was going to say. If it's an issue, then maybe we wouldn't grant it. But. Shouldn't be an issue. And so just so you all know too, the, the parking has been a discussion, you know, at these events. Yes. We did put another set of I don't know, whatever they call it, farm fence. When you drive down into our park, directly down to the right-hand side, and last year for one of their big events, we talked about it beforehand, the, yes, it was dry down there. We opened those and they gated, they put uh, tape across yeah. so they could park like three rows of cars down in there. They, well, they parked probably a hundred cars down in there. And it's just so you guys know, this is how the yeah. park has like slowly been evolving. You know, I've had some questions about what are you going to do now that RK Miles is um, taking away all the parking? We'll work around it. You know, we have we have a lot of land down there that we haven't used in the past, and uh, you know that right side is pretty much uh, packed nothing. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Next application for Oxbow Park for GMSS. Is it right here? Yep. Green Mountain Support Services. Digital first. With the moves. Hmm? Moves in the music festival. We approved the liquor we license, did it. but not the. Yes, we that's did. That's on here. It's one of these three I don't think we approved the I don't the think we approved keys. the using you, the you octopus. Oh, I thought we did. No, just the liquor license. Okay. Well, we'll do. Let's do all three of them. So the first one yeah. is before July 1st, so there's no fees attached to it. Yep. All right. I make a move, uh, motion to approve the Oxbow Park use for MOOGs on June 30th, 2019, uh, for MOOGs on Saturday, August 24th, 2019, and for Green Mountain Support Services on 8-17. August 17th. Yeah, that's a, I'm going to put their birthday in there. August yeah. 17, 2019. As long as they get a fee schedule and understand they have to pay the fee schedule. They, so they it'll, that it'll be subject to the fee schedule. When they draw off their application. Okay. All right, I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion has passed. Next, name change for Douglas Lane to Douglas Farm Lane. So that was because there was confusion at the 911 board at the state level. I think the emails kind of explained that. They, they thought the one that was too close. So they, they That's what I, I brought it up at the time. So they wanted something different. Yeah. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion has passed. Number six, discuss solar for town electrical needs. Come on up, Alex. Um, I'm not going to ask you to make a decision. I already talked to Alex about this. Alex and didn't work up here with the pickles. Yeah. Past uh, a couple months, maybe, something like that. Yep. Um, and you guys are doing the, the old gravel pit. Elizabeth Lane. Elizabeth Lane. Elizabeth Lane. <coughs> project. Um, and it came to me with a proposal to do kind of a net metering project for the town using part of that output from that. The same token, I know that the village is also working on the other one that's on Route 100, and they will be coming to a proposal. And I didn't know that till today, so I called Alex and let him know. So Craig sent me an email today to say that they're going to try to do the same thing. So I think in fairness, there, there, there could be, or shortly will be, 
hopefully another proposal in front of you to evaluate too. So I've talked to Alex and he's comfortable not a decision being made tonight, but to go through the proposal so that you guys would understand what it is and how it would work. Yeah. So I explain that and then yeah. I'm going to pass the baton to you. That sounds great. Yeah, and, and I think Dan printed out kind of what I put together in overview. Uh, yeah, we're, so we're, we're in development for about a month here. Um, we are waiting any day now for our permit to build 150 kW on the, you know, less than an acre of the Elizabeth Lane gravel pit that's been reclaimed. Um, it's a net metered project. Do you folks know how net metering works? So essentially it goes onto the grid and we tell the utility who to credit the power to. Um, so for every dollar worth of credit you receive on your bill, you would pay the project 88 cents and get a 12% savings basically. So, you know, Dan um, was nice enough to send me your bills. So I was able to take a look through them uh, over the last couple of years. And um, essentially this project could save you a little over $3,000 a year over the next 20, 20 years. Um, it, it increases gradually over that time. It averaged around $3,200 a year in savings. There's no cost to you to sign up. Um, we, we typically go to towns and schools first uh, primarily because we, we believe in that as a community approach. Um, but we also know you're going to be here for 20 years and you're going to you know, pay your obligations for 20 years as opposed to you know, some, maybe some businesses and, and others. Um, we've, been, we've done this with a number of towns and schools throughout the state. Um, locally we did, it, you know, we did a megawatt with the city of Montpelier. We've done over a megawatt with the city of Barrie, Barrie Town. Royal and Sharon, number all the schools in all those areas as well. Um, this is net metering has been a very successful program here in Vermont. This is a pretty small project, 150 kW, uh, doesn't take up a lot of room. Um, it, you would be taking a roughly 65 percent of the power from this project, um, and you know we we've kind of held off continuing conversations with others with the hopes that we get you guys on board first. Um, and I'm totally willing to stand by until you, you know, look at that other proposal, as long as it's in a re relatively timely manner, which I think it sounds like it could be. Um, so that's kind of the spiel. Am I missing anything, Dan? Yeah, or? Yeah, once again, it's just, you know, converting, you know, just because everything that we have on meter, Tina and, and Paula gave them all of our bills, so it's all of our meter power um, that he's had the opportunity to look at. Um, so you know, all that would essentially be, you know, powered by solar at that point in time and the town would benefit from the, the electrical bills would benefit from the net metering process. What, uh, what what stops us from joining into a, an agreement with both the projects? Because we would be running all of our electricity all of our electricity would be made by one. So in other words, he's taken all of our electricity <coughs> and calculated those into his thing so that you know, that's um, this project easily covers all of our electricities, I guess. And what's the comparison on the size of the one on 100, right on the one for 100? Uh, it's size? like an over two megawatt project. Yeah, that's so it. that's, that's taking one. up yeah. you know, okay. 15, 20 acres. If I, I'm not sure off the top of my head, it's, it's huge. You know, it's right there. You know, yeah. it's a big one. 150 is pretty small. It's pretty small. They're all fixed panels? Yep, fixed panel. You can't see it. It's, I don't know if you can see that size. I remember when we improved the site. Yeah. yeah, good, good it's site. Good look. Yeah. Yeah. Is this, have you approached the school system? We did, and we approached them kind of before town meeting day. <laughs> we got kind of the comeback after we're, we're busy, um, which is totally understandable. They got a lot on their plate. So we will continue to go down that route. But you know what I don't like to do is kind of offer something to somebody and then go to somebody else and offer it, you know, and have. So I like to always bring it to the town or municipality first and kind of say yes or no and then go from there. So at least I know how much more I have to, to get from a school or, or someone else. So I know that there's initial outlay, correct? No, 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 no cost to you. Who pays for the panels then and all that? We own it. You, so you pay for it, you own it, you erect it and everything. Correct, and we operate it for the 20 plus years. Okay. Um, so the reason we do this is for the cash flow, just like any kind of transaction, real estate or other like, but there's also tax credits associated with right. this. Um, as a municipality, you can't, you know, you're, you're non -tax, you're tax, you can't use tax credits. So um, it wouldn't make a lot of sense, which is why all these towns and schools generally go down this route. It doesn't make a lot of sense for you to spend, in this case, you know, $350,000 on an array where you can't utilize 
one of the major assets, which is the tax benefit. Um, and you know, something we can actually talk about if we wanted to go down that route, if, if there's ownership is something important to you, um, we can offer, and we've done this with the city of Montpelier, ownership was a really important piece to them, but they didn't want to own it right off the bat because it didn't make sense. So we actually offered them a purchase option um, in year 10. And we, we could talk about that here with you folks as well, if that's something that you'd be interested in. It's a little more complicated with you because you wouldn't be the only group member. You can't use all the power. Um, so you would you would use as much as you use and then you'd have to administer the rest and administrate the rest with whoever the off taker is. Whereas the city of Montpelier, they're gonna use it all and it'd be, you know, if they want to float a bond and buy it, it made more sense potentially for them. But that's something we can talk about if, if it's of interest. <coughs> Um, or just simply say, hey, we'll just take the three plus thousand dollars a year, every year, uh, no cost to you, and <clears throat> you don't save the money. Um, so so the other 35% of the power then is yours to use and to sell back to the um, electric company. Yeah, so the other 35% will find a home for. So if you guys were to sign up with us, we would then go to the schools or to um, you know another group in in Morrisville Water and Light Service Territory and, and provide them with the same thing we're providing you basically uh, find a home for that power. Does it have to be a nonprofit? No, nope. it does not. Yeah, it's you know it's essentially up to us, the owners, to tell the utility who to credit the power to. Um, we. Like I said, we typically like to work with folks that are a little more financially credit worthy, if you know what I mean, <laughs> are going to be there. It's a longer term play. It's a 20 year play. So, uh, you know, you want, you want someone who's not going to be gone in five years and find some, and have to go find somebody else. I mean, you can do that. But. So I know the, the whole electric bill, I know, doesn't go away. There's still a little bit of a cost, I think, to the town. So, not, so not a lot, but still. Um, so the way it works. Um, actually, on that last page, if, if you have it, it's just the second page, it kind of breaks it down. What, how we do this is we, we do it off your cost. All right, so you guys spend roughly $33,000 a year in power cost. There are a number of charges in your bills that we can't credit against, just per the rules. Mm -hmm. So we take those, those are called non-bypassable charges. We take those out, and then we actually take the remainder and we cut it down to about 85%. And we're going to credit you about 85%. The reason we do that is because we don't want to limit you folks to f efficiency measures in the future. If you feel like, and I know you've gone through that already, Dan, and we've talked about that, but you never know what's going to happen in 20 years. Maybe a better LED light will come out and you guys can cut costs even more. We don't want to be crediting you more than you can use. So typically we, and we could talk about that 85% if you guys feel really strongly like nothing's going to come down the road, but. Everything I've seen recommendation wise said that you, you, know, you shouldn't, for solar, you know, if you're going to do it, that you shouldn't build 100% of your usage. You should work around the 85%, just be, for the exact same reason right. that you're saying. Right. So, right. So, so essentially, you will still owe more solar, water, and light an amount every month, mm -hmm. and you'll owe the project an amount every month. And the way it works, uh, accounting-wise, is at the beginning of every year, we make a projection. You know, solar fluctuates in how many kilowatt hours it produces every year, depending on snow and everything else. Um, so at the beginning of every year, we, we make an, an engineered accurate guess as to what we think that production will be for that year. We then will cr we'll bill you the same amount every month based on that amount. You pay the same amount every month. At the end of the year, we do what's called a true up. Essentially look at what you paid, what you were credited, and we typically have to pay you back a little bit of money. Um, or you have to pay us a little bit of money. It's usually pretty close. Um, so every month you're gonna, instead of just paying more for water and light every month, you now have to pay them, but you also have to pay one more bill in, uh, you know, to us, basically. In what are you paying you for? The power. So your, so your bill. For so I, I, we, we installed solar in our house, so yeah. I'm familiar with this and how it works Good. Uh, yeah, to yeah, an great. extent. And so I know what we had to do. Yep. So that's why I'm asking these questions. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, so we're going to build this array. And we're are going to, the kilowatts are just going to go onto the grid. But there's going to be a meter at that array that figures out how many kilowatt hours are being produced. The utility is going to say, Alex, where do you want these kilowatt hour credits to be assigned? I tell them these are the bills they're going to go to. 
So if you have a hundred dollar bill, and let's take non bipossibles let's just take that out for a second. Say you have a hundred dollar bill with more full water in life. Mm -hmm. We're going to credit you a hundred dollars worth of solar credits. So you're going to get a bill that says zero dollars owed to Morseville Water and Light because you're part of the solar group. You then, you haven't paid Morseville Water and Light a hundred dollars, which you normally would if you weren't part of this group. You'll turn around and pay the project eighty-eight dollars. So you're going to save your twelve bucks right there on, on that. Um, that's just kind of a simple way to think about it. It's, it's more of a financial transaction than anything else. Um, the credits we give you are, are going towards um, reducing your bill. So because you're part of this project, you're paying much less to Morseville Water and Light. And what that, that difference you are paying to the project, but it's less than you'd pay to Morseville Water and Light. And at the end of the year, you're saving roughly you know, $3,100 a year, as opposed to not just doing what you're doing right now. Um, it doesn't change the way you get your power at all. I mean, it's, it's simply a financial transaction. If this project goes away, your lights will still stay on. I mean, it's not going to affect that in any way either. Um, so, like your array on your house, I mean, you, I assume you bought it. Buying it. Or buying it, correct, but, but you own it. Yeah. As a, this, this is like if you had someone else come and own it <laughs> and just sell you the power at a discounted mm -hmm. rate. So it's it's a third-party ownership of a solar array, essentially. Does that answer your question? Yes. I know I drew a lot of answers. No, I, no, I think I understand it better now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. What are, what are the downside risks? Uh, there are a lot of downside risks. Um, the, the, the downside risk that has been identified in the past is if power prices were to drop drastically um, over the next 20 years. Um, which in my career I haven't seen that and historically they've gone up about two to two and a half percent every single year. So if right now, you know, being a small muni, it's not surprising, but you folks are paying quite a bit for your kilowatt hours. You know, it's some, some cases you're paying over, you know, like 40 cents a kilowatt hour, but usually you're in the 20 to 25 cent a kilowatt hour range that you're paying. In order for you to have any type of risk, the power rates would have to drop to like you know 14 cents a kilowatt hour you know really drastically come down um it, you know every group that we've gone across has said that's not really that big a risk in our our, our, our view and i would agree with that one of the things i know is a factor is uh, the technology changes mm -hmm. yeah. a lot we have trackers at concept two and fixed panels and, okay yeah. you know we we produce about 45 percent of our power nice. with uh, with the solar and um, one thing about it is 20 years is a long time yeah. it's not on us it's on you no i know but yeah. the technology changes eight or ten years sure. You know, you may want to update the panels or whatever. I don't know if you guys have a plan for that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's a big thing. I don't know, it, totally, and it's a great, great point. And um, one nice thing about this type of arrangement uh, is that because we own it, we're um, we're all on the same team. You know, we we right. want to have as efficient a project as possible. Yeah. So, like you said, if a new uh, rank, a new module comes out that's just extremely efficient, we'll do the numbers, and then hey, if it it change produces it. more power, we'll change it out. You're still going to get your savings, maybe right. a little more, depending on how it all shakes out. Yeah, with us not owning them, it's on you guys. It's on us. So. Yeah, exactly. And, and you, so we're we're all kind of running on the same same more there on that. Um, but it's a great point. It's something we look at. I mean, inverters, the the uh, panels themselves come with like a 25 year warranty. Yeah. And over the last 40 years, the price has come down, and the size has kind of changed a little bit, but the efficiency is pretty much the same, yeah. you know, so there hasn't been this major jump. doesn't mean there can't be, um, but inverters and other pieces of equipment are, we're starting to see some changes in those and stuff. Right. So yeah, it's certainly an evolving technology. And then you bring in storage and all that piece to right. it too, you know, and that's right. a whole different thing. Batteries, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Any questions? We don't vote on anything, we're just no, discussing it. Until the day, I didn't know that we were looking to do that. Um, and just for everybody, they're looking to do something similar to what the co-op did um, with the panels with their farm that they're building, so yeah. the farm that they're building. The co-op actually had one where you can actually go in for um, home, and I think they built one at Oliver that they did it with. It's cooperatively owned so that you would actually own part of those panels rather than, in our case, what we put them on our house. 
So mm -hmm. rather than that, maybe that would be in those panels out there. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough details to really explain um, how the village is doing that or how they would look at it. I, mean, I, I just did want Alex to come in here and drop the Oh, yeah, I've got another proposal for you to consider, too. Um, but Craig has promised me a quick turnaround on that, of course. Okay. Well, thanks, Alex. Yeah, no, thanks. Any other questions before I go? I mean, I'll, I'll come back, you know, whenever the time's right. And Sounds like a win-win for us. It, it, it's a great, great opportunity, and yeah. we're excited to build it this spring. You know, we're any day now we'll get a permit, so. Great. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. <clears throat> Next, appointments and resignations for Parks and Recreation Committee. <clears throat> I'll do the two appointments. Sure. I move we accept Meg Cleary and Valerie Valcour as members of the Morristown Parks and Recreation Committee. And, and, oops, I guess we do that first. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. I move we accept the resignation of Shelley Schaefer from the Morristown Parks and Recreation. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, town meeting recap. Chair and I were talking, and I you know, listened to you guys talk a little bit after town meeting, and we just thought we would put something on the agenda for us all to have a discussion about what we saw, what we got, what we did Good idea. There's some things that, you know, there was just a lot of discussion, there always has been a discussion, you know, about uh, nonprofits and the way those appropriations are done, some of the mechanics of the town meeting, you know, that, that Sarah is looking at and trying to, to smooth the, the process a little bit. So we just thought we would throw this out here to have a general discussion. And if there's any policies that you want us to work on beforehand or anything that we need to change. Now, that way we, we won't get till next December or get what we were doing in the town meeting kind of thing. So we just thought we'd throw this on the tent for a general discussion. That way you know, right. we don't lose anything in the next six to eight months. Well, about that's a great do. idea. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I know like with the um, that list of businesses that we give money to, I know I seem like I was the hard guy on that because uh, I think somebody should be there. You know, I know it explains in the back of the town report what they do, but that's free money. You know, and if you give somebody five grand, they can have somebody to represent them to answer questions. Because sometimes there is. I've been there many times. There's been questions. Oh, what was that for? What did we do? You know, it doesn't matter if it says in the back. Any, I could print something up that said in the back too. But if you're not there, you know, like that group Todd brought up, it's out of the area now. They're in Barry. You know. I mean, they poo-pooed on me making somebody come, but it's my money, <laughs> you know? I want to have somebody there, you know? And when a lot of them do have somebody there, I think it's important. Well, I thought a long time ago, the select board made a, a recommendation that somebody's there because, yeah. first of all, I, whether whether you do anything if they're not, or the people would have the right to say they're not going to do it. There is nobody there going to tell us right. what they use it for, or if they're still around, or anything like that. I do like maybe doing a, like the three year thing. And I think, I don't know for sure, but I don't remember how many signatures they have to have each time. 5%, which is roughly 200. 200, yeah. See, if they were already on there, I wonder if we could make that a little easier no. to, to keep it flowing. It'd be um, nicer to make it easier. No, yeah. that's state statute. Oh, okay. You sure, can change whatever. the three years yeah. That you just mentioned to five years or never, just once, but the petition guidelines itself, okay. they I have think, to have the 5%. I think Sarah if you're, I, if you're going to require a petition. I, I think Sarah and I would kind of recommend five years. And, I, and, and this is the reason why and we talked about this a little bit, because there's such a list now it's long that list. You, you would, if you did every three years, you're going to have about seven or eight new articles each year. Mm. That you're going to go through one by one each year, so it's it's really going to be repetitive. You're you're going to have more articles just on the, the nonprofit appropriations than you will for anything else. Um, so, you know, if you do it every 
five years, then you've limited that down to three or four that are going to be separate articles each year rather than seven to eight. And, and it, it is a, you know, I'm sure Judy can say it, it's, it's a lot of work and a lot of mm -hmm. effort to get it. And it does bring it back in, you know, it, it does give some cycle to it where it's gone. You know, that's just, you know, I'll let you think. That's, that's my opinion on it too. If you're looking at it, then you're going to have more articles for, for everything else, you know, for your nonprofit appropriations than you would for the whole rest of the There's town meetings. There's 24. Now with these new ones that were just voted, there is 24 businesses that are on this list now. So if we get some interest, they must go on a separate article, yes. and we couldn't still do the bucket of them. Uh, I'm, I'm not understanding so your question. So we our current process is anyone who's new. Yep. Um, or requesting, requesting a change in the amount yes. gets the 5% votes and it goes on a separate article. Yes. <clears throat> if the, if, I'll pick on Lamoille Home Health. If Lamoille Home Health, their time is up and they have to get their 5% of signatures, they're not making a change in the amount, if they get their signatures, can they still stay in the that's your policy Consent. to create. So it's how. So we could you, do that then. So that may address maybe you the article. Maybe two separate articles: one for the new people that are doing the five, the five years, and then. Yeah, yeah just a, a technicality on that piece of it. So if, if they are having voters sign a petition for an article, I'm obligated to put that article on that. So Got it. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So okay. That was, you my, you could that say, was my question. You could say, "Do you support us?" remaining on the non town non appropriation but no article if there's an article there right, so we could do it we could, we could depending do it. on how we redo them exactly signatures. but if you're if you're making it an article that the petition has then the i don't have any leeway as far as changing the wording on then it. if that holds true and it's not an article does the previous question hold true where we could limit it to 100 signatures i'd say that you could probably do that as a form of the policy as long as it's not an article. I'm completely lost. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just say that the select board How is it not an article? How is it not an article? The select board will let's say either something the select board wants to see continued support for uh, non appropriation or appropriations to nonprofits. Do you support the town still appropriating this amount of dollars to us? And within hundred signatures. It's not an article. It's just remain support to be non-binding. It's not really what it's just that shows that there's still the support of the community to get it. It's but it's not an article that it's not signing. a petition. It's not a petition. Yeah. Which would force the state statute. That's my question. I don't know. So if I'm you just trying to be creative mm -hmm. of avoiding because I really don't feel like avoiding voting on twenty something articles. I wouldn't mind doing five years. One to five years. And is there a way that you could kind of like, two of them just got on a week ago, so that if we looked at that list, I don't know if there's a way of saying, okay, you're due next year, you're due the following year, you're due. So we would, you know, the mechanics of that, I think we would take the ones that we know have been on there for a while and start with that list. Start with and that. then somebody who just got one, like over the couple, last couple of years, like River Arts, I think was two years Elizabeth ago. Elizabeth did some spot checking for me. I, I haven't, I didn't know how you guys felt, so I, we haven't really spent a lot of time. There's like maybe five of the 25-ish, six in the past five years or so. Hmm. 20, uh, you know, 18 to 20 are old. Right. Yeah. So that, so if you change your policy, I would really need clear guidelines. How does it start? How does it apply? When are we, when are, I don't know how to phrase my question, but. What's the phasing? That's yeah. what I say, even write a letter, you know, to re-up. Write well, a letter. They send the letter every year. They send a letter. They do. They yes. send a letter every year. But they don't have to do anything but send a letter to Erica, and they're on here if they were on the year before. And half the time, I'm going to chase them down and get the letter. Right. See, that's that's what I've heard. That's See, what I, I don't like. I think the biggest thing is that is like ones you're chasing down shouldn't have to chase them. The other right. thing is making sure that they're 
doing this for the town of Morristown, that they haven't moved out of town, right. and we send them money out there, and they're out there using it in some um, other There town. may be a little confusion on that, because there are entities that are outside of the town that still provide services. In the for the town. Right. For the right. town. Um, right. Green Mountain Transit yep. is, a, is, a, is a great example of the, the transportation. They serve the whole state. So they, their offices may not be here, but they're still providing a service to the town. And that's and the thing can, I'd like to make sure that they have. I mean, they don't have to like you said, reside here as long as they're... Yeah. Yeah, just a way to check on them, to make sure that yes. they're real and they're still doing it. Because yeah. almost every one of them, are, well, probably I might say almost, probably all of them are great things to... to well, have. we increase them, you know. Yeah. It's, Increase them from the floor. It's not that, but I just want to make sure that it's being used right. Yeah, me too. And not make a hassle of doing it. Right. So. I think three years kind of would be a hassle. I mean, Judy probably knows. Well, as long as you have the hassle, we won't, right? Well, no, I, for you. well, it would be a hassle. No, for I'm too. thinking for the, the people collecting the suit. Right. Yeah. Yes. Well, and also the townspeople that are getting hassled for signatures all the time, too. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing is, when when we say we'd like somebody there, I, they could ask a friend or somebody to come yeah, in. That's what I said. Perhaps so they, because some of these things, we don't know exactly what they do and how they do things. It'd be well, nice so if they had a person that would come mm -hmm. to town meeting, so if somebody had the question, they could answer it. Well, someone had talked about a group that had maybe three people employed, and it was Clarina Howard Nichols or another group that, that they yeah. don't, they're all working. So it, it might be kind of difficult to have someone come in and speak on their behalf. Clarina did reach out to me after they heard about the discussion, um, and they said for them it's a paid holiday also, and they are very encouraged to go to their own town meeting. And so, um, yeah. Send one to ours. Yeah. We give them a lot of money. Well, or they can go there. there and if you want to enact a policy or something about, you know, 100 signatures or whatever every so many years, maybe part of that could be every five years you have to have a representative come right. so they can talk about, you know, this or something. I don't know. Well, this whole thing takes place in like an hour or less than an hour. Mm -hmm. Not the whole day. You know, might, 20 minutes, you know. I want to suggest that we pull this specific requirement out of town meeting day. That if we're going to make them come to us to prove that they're still an entity, still serving our community, that we set it up for a meeting here, Ahead in this time. forum, That's prior right. to town meeting, such that we aren't bogging town meeting down with hours and hours and hours. So we would do the same type of thing, five years or whatnot, but they would have to come and make a quick presentation to us on an off night in town meeting. So you yeah. mean those who are up doing their petition, the ones doing the petition, I'm going to say petition, getting the signatures, that's the year they come in. Yes. So sometime during the year before town meeting, they come in. Because would, that, would, that would take us out of the complication of the statutory requirement for the 200 signatures in an article and all that. We could set a policy where they have to come into this meeting, which doesn't require all those signatures. If the entity was to come to us with their proposal and talk to us about numbers and what they do, we might be able to eliminate that whole petition piece if that's problematic. And if they don't come, they just don't get put on the warning? Is well, that would, yeah. it, it, the onus would be on us to, to warn them that your five years is this year. Our meeting is this night that you will need to make your presentation. Please call us to let us know that you're going to be there, who's going to be their representative. If they don't send a representative, if they don't show up, then they don't go on the list for time of day. When do you put those lists together? In the morning. It's yeah, in the morning. No, no. The like, starts on at what? October? September, October. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then they'd have to be in here prior to that. Yeah. We could do it as part of the budget cycle. Good. Yeah. That's but interesting. I, that's interesting. I remember that's what Brian said. We've talked about that before, having people come in and see us beforehand, you know, to make sure they're there who they are to get the money. I mean, this was five years ago or more. I remember we brought it up. So that could be part of their letter that I send out that you yeah. are due for your review and you need to be here on this day. And oh. it's in the evening, so nobody has to get out of work to do it. Right. And if there's a scheduling thing, we can reschedule them for it. We, got, we, we, we meet on a regular When they can do it. Yeah. The whole the petition thing 
I, I understand where you're coming from with that, but I, what comes to my mind is Lori Marco last year. She was a one-person show, and they'd get money from every town. Right. For her to get 200 signatures and more, so it was going to be so incredibly time-consuming. I don't yeah. know how she'd done it. Yeah. So we, I know there's other energies out there similar to that. So yeah. if we can eliminate that piece of it, have them come to see us, because we're going to the taxpayers and saying, these articles are what we need you to vote upon. So we're giving the legitimacy to what's in those articles. So if they come to us, prove us they're still here, then we present it to the taxpayers. We're the ones saying they are still in existence. We have confirmed this. I like that, Eric. Yeah, and then it doesn't come back on you too to look at the petitions and all the names right. and stuff. Right. Which is which is fine if you want to do that. And people have approached me about having the petitions in the five years. Mm -hmm. A lot of taxpayers. If you were going to do it, I was just going to request that you figure out, I don't know how to do it good, but stagger it. Because we have a very short deadline that we have to review every single 200 signatures on the checklist. Um, and so we couldn't I mean, do, it all could do 20 in one day, but it <laughs> be a long day. Yeah. Do you like I, I like because people tend to bring it the last minute. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> I like Eric's suggestion. Yeah. I think it's a good one. That's why you get the big bucks. And that works for you too, right? I mean, that would take the burden off you. If, that, if you do that, that's no <laughs> burden on me whatsoever. That's the burden falls on you. Right. Just really changing the policy just to have we'll go through the list and we'll see who's been out there for a while and we'll start having them come in during budget cycle. Yeah. And they wouldn't have to do any signatures or anything right. like that. Chris, and figure out how I just want to make sure I'm clear because we talked about a few different things. So yeah. the, on a given interval, five years, uh, the folks that are on the uh, group appropriations list will come in to a select board meeting to remove, plead their case, and if so, they will go on to the appropriations list. All new appropriations or changes in appropriations will continue to go through the state statute process for an article. You got it. Yes. Yep. And also, if and sorry, the last piece. Then they will not be required, but encouraged to have representation at time. Right. Okay. You got it. Okay. Right. So we'll make sure. We'll, that way, we can get, get a new policy and have it. Because the policy was really handy during this fall, because people would come in and they'd want to know, and it was very easy to here's our policy. Mm -hmm. You know, here's the select board's policy on on how to to get an appropriation. So that was very handy for both of us to be able to hand that out. So it was very clear, everybody knew what the expectation was. No, you can't change the policy, you know, this is, this is what we're gonna do. Um, so that, that was easy for us, so we can work on something. And we have it, we have it, it'll go out in the newspaper, and it'll be on television, so we've got different ways for it going out too. Well then, you know, when Erica sends out her letter, yep. we'll schedule, we'll start to schedule those ones that yeah. need to cycle and say, hey, you, you need to come into a select board meeting to, to have your, your corporation reapproved to stay on the warning. And the policy, I would assume, would be on a future meeting where yeah. you we'll revise. Yeah. And I don't know if you still think five years is appropriate having them come in or if you want to do them through three years. I was just thinking three years for them to get 200 signatures is pretty soon for them. Five years. So you're talking about, the, and you said that's 24? There's 24 right now. Right, so that's about five a year, approximately, in a five-year period, right? Or am I mm -hmm. wrong? No, six. If you do it that way, if you stagger it, yeah. 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 I had a couple other ideas I wanted to toss out for the board to consider. Do we have to do a motion on this thing? No. No? no? Okay. Uh, Sorry. One of them is the folks who are coming to us for the first time, that there is a cap on the amount that they request the first year. Just throwing that out there to, to bash around. And the other is um, escapes me, but I'll have it back in a minute. But. And I'll tell you where this is coming from. I was completely shocked at the lack of questions asked of E equals MC squared. And I'm going to say right up front, I'm not against this group at all. What they're doing is wonderful. No issues whatsoever, but they got an appropriation equal to the largest sum on our list of 20 something people. First time out of the gate. Mm -hmm. 
I, I know that they're a certified nonprofit. They, they've come in, I think they've shown us that. I think they did one of the meetings, they, they got their status. But nobody asked that question. And the other thing I had was, uh, I, and they said they're coming in here. Someone asked the question of them when they come here. Um, they said they served a thousand people this last year. So my question is, is that a thousand Morristown residents? I don't think so. That's 20% of our population, 18% of our population, right? So my question is, when they come to the statistics like this, I, I just, I couldn't believe nobody asked any questions. Is this being funded completely by the taxpayers of the town of Morristown, but we're accepting folks into the program that are from all other, maybe even two counties worth, all their communities? Not, I, I, if I was them, I wouldn't turn people away. But in fairness to our taxpayers, if they're going to float $15,000, which was the equivalent of the grant money that started the program, if, the, if they're servicing a region, then they should be asking for funds from other parts of the region, not all from the more some taxpayer. So I, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I think from my understanding, they could ask for $100,000 if they had their 2000 or if they had their 5% of the electorate agreeing with them and it passes, then they can get as much as the right. will of the people in that auditorium. Which is, which is my, I agree with you, and what, which is my point, first time out, is there any we, merit to I don't think we can, I don't think we can statutorily limit that. I don't think you can. Okay. What about, and I'll throw this out, because like, it came back. I don't, just, came back. I don't necessarily disagree with you, back I don't think it's. So, and it would be up to the taxpayers to question, and, they, and we know that any one of those can be, Run out of that during town meeting right. and cut their amounts cut or raised. We've seen it happen before. Right. Is there any merit to us putting a limit on the total dollar amount that the taxpayers are going to be given? I see this list continuing to grow and grow and grow. We are at a cent and a half on the grand list right now, approximately, I would say. Close. 93,000. That's you know, close. so I'm just thinking. So again, I think if they're in article form, it's up to the will of the voters in that auditorium, and they can pull them out. If it's in the bulk, they can they have the right to pull them out individually. But I don't. We. It can be amended. Okay. Yeah. So we could introduce that mm -hmm. as we. I think have a tendency to not do that, that. Mm -hmm. and as tax. Payers and right. voters, yeah, um, boom, so we could do that. But I don't think beyond that, it's that's why we have town meeting. That's why I threw it out. <laughs> I wanted to have a discussion about it because it's that one just stood out to me that nobody asked any questions. So yeah. to that point, it makes it more of an argument to encourage people to go get their signatures every X number of years. Yeah. I know you use that group just for an example, but like that group is very, very good. Mm -hmm. They all have 30 or 40 kids a day from Morrisville mm -hmm. in school, after school. And I donated to them personally. It's like unbelievable. Yep. You know, between that and the other one over here, was that Morrisville? Rocks or whatever. Yeah, Youth Rocks. They're both great. And they're, they're like almost in competition with each other now. They're, well, I think they, uh, the intent of their programs, from what I understood, was, is different. There is some support services offered yeah. at one that is not specifically offered at the other. So I think they're, I don't want to say there's duplication of effort there because I really think that their, their target crowd is different. Yeah, so, it is. Um, it's a great program. I just, uh, yeah, anyway. There's my two cents. We've batted it around and thank you for your input. Do you need any change? No. <laughs> I, I don't disagree with you. I think but it's really the it's the will of the people of yep. how they spend the money. One thing that you do on the letters when they go out, uh, I think it needs to say if your appropriation is granted or whatever, please know you're not going to get your money until October. Mm -hmm. Because we had people thinking they were getting their money now. Right. It's not even the new year, right. you know, and we don't get out appropriations till October when our tax money comes in. Because right. we don't want to create a shortfall for our cash. Right. So people are like, well, that's not what I expect. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think Spell that we should make that clear. Yeah. We can put that in the letter next year, being you know, that we don't pay the appropriation until October, November time frame. So you can put Good. it in your policy. Put it in your policy, too. Yeah. 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 Funds are not available until. Right. Well, let's shift gears and talk about 
I keep getting the Morrisville, Morristown thing from tons of people, and I know Marianne Wilson brought it up at town meeting, and so did Dick Sargent. And um, actually, <coughs> talked to Andrew Martin today, he called me. But um, I guess I'm old school. I like more Andrew hit me in the store. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, yeah, everyone's like, what do you guys do? And now that it, the burden lies on us, you know, we have the, the power to change it. You know, I guess I'm old school. I want to keep it Morristown because I grew up here and I, I know the difference. Not to mention that, but it, we'd have to spend a lot of money changing the signs. Not just the Welcome to Morristown sign, but all the other signs. There's a lot of them, like the boundary all of, signs. All of our vehicles, all of our all, uniforms. Oh, it would it'd be interesting to have an idea of how much that would cost. Well, I bet it would be a lot of money. Not to mention going through the government and Change getting charter. our tax ID number yeah. do, done. And, I mean, right. it would be a nightmare. Well, I think, whose idea was this anyway to, to do that? One mine. <laughs> the post office? I heard the post Wait, office. This? <laughs> That's all I can think of is who, must be somebody who needs to somewhere else. But I, I don't think else. the taxpayers understand that it would cost them money. A lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be a couple hundred bucks for a sign either. That point would be nice. Nicely made in the paper. <laughs> and the unofficial yeah. results were 30 difference, but when the BCA finalized and counted, it was only 28 difference. So it was even. Well, the other thing is, people told me that they think they voted wrong because the way it was written, in favor of not changing it or in favor of changing it. Even my wife was like, Well, I don't think I voted it right. I'm like, Oh my God. And I had people work saying that. I'm like, I just don't think we should do it. It's ridiculous. I agree with you. I think there was a couple um, interesting points made at town meeting, and I think um, one thing that I find interesting is we've spent uh, much of a last year and a half around uh, you know our history walk and talking about the history of downtown Morrisville and all the, that piece, and you know we're fairly quick to dismiss the history around the. Morristown itself, um, which I I think is important. The other thing is, I think it's also an interesting opportunity to educate people. So if people yes. move to the town, we have perhaps we know who moves here. We can have some education. We can talk to our uh, educators and have an opportunity to educate. Sarah does stuff, you know, starting in kindergarten now and. Uh, there's an opportunity, I think, to focus on education instead of um, just, in my opinion, taking the easier way out. So I am not in favor of moving forward with changing the name to Morrisville. And I think, from my opinion, uh, I don't think there's a mandate from the voters either based on the recent non-binding. Sean. So I have a question. So I've been asked this now a couple of times. The town report comes out and says Morristown Fire Department. But legally, we're not Morristown Fire Department. We're Morrisville Fire Department. Now, Sean, how is that? Because you're a department of the town. This is, you, this you is just the way that it's been said, and it's never been said that we were moved to Morristown. Right? You were Morrisville the, Fire our, Department when you were run by the village. When the town took you over, you're right, the town of Morristown. That's my next question is, does anybody know when that was when that happened? I can find out. Yeah, there was yeah. there was actually a lot of work that was done when they turned the, the village garage and the fire department and the village streets and all those assets. I'm just thinking as we're putting as we get all these new trucks, is it time to start switching that name over hmm. to make it less confusing? What do you have on Morrisville? If they all say Morrisville. I would say yes. Yes, I agree. I think so too. Because it's a legal entity. You are a department of the town. And right. you're funded by the town. You're not funded by and the that, And that's the question. Is, you know, right. These last three trucks we bought, we put Morrisville on them. Right. Should we start putting Morristown on the ones coming up? Yep. And on your fire department. Judy, what do you think? Oh, I agree. And I, I know we did the uh, interviews for the rescue squad. Every single candidate wanted to know what were we, Morrisville, Morristown. Um, so people coming in from out of the out of the community didn't know. Fun what? opportunity to educate people. Yeah, <laughs> and the, the other reason is because as we start going through the budgeting process for next year, is you know we have seventy thousand dollars worth of uniforms that say Morrisville, and if we're going to change it to Morristown, let's slowly start doing it because we have money in the budget. Yeah, Brian, what do you think? 
Oh, I agree. I don't think it should be changed. In fact, the joke is out there. If we change it, do we have to build a wall? <laughs> Might need to. With Legos. <laughs> Somebody called me and said, so what are you going to do? Change more town corners to more school corners? Yeah, no. no more I think leave it alone. I think it's going to cost a lot of money. A lot. a lot of confusion. <laughs> if you think it's confusion now, I think it'll be a lot more. When you start changing people's addresses and all this, I just... When I was a kid 40 years ago, and you were going to Morrisville, I was... <laughs> four, okay, I was crazy. I'm 56, I did my math. <laughs> so, when I was a teenager 40 years ago, you went to Morrisville, you went to do your shopping in Morrisville. Because there was no North End. There was a movie theater on the out, outdoor movie theater yeah. and a price a P and C. Right. That was it. Yeah. And Ames came along. That was a big deal. But you came to the Ben Franklin's. You came to the T T U Market or the Grand Union at one point. You did your shopping here. here. Bourne's Hardware Store. This whole street was vibrant and alive with these small businesses. And so you actually did go to Morrisville to do your shopping. Yeah. It was here in the village. It's now spread. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where Morrisville was used more than anything because you were going to Morrisville to do that shopping 40 years ago and before. Yeah. You go to Morrisville and then go to the drive-in, remember the drive-in? That's what I'm talking about. The outside, yeah. or the outside theater. Outside. Yeah. So you say don't change it. I know, no way. It's what, history. What I'm, not, I'm not in favor of changing history, historical. This has been Morristown for 240 something years. Oh, we're Morristown. Yeah, 240 something. So we're not we're talking about keeping Morristown, the town of Morristown. Correct. Yes. Everything okay. the same way. Right. We have so. a nice sign that we keep in the vault that explains <laughs> the two. So when people have questions, honestly, we just hand them the sign. Nice. And Good. sometimes we photocopy it for them. And photocopy and put it in the paper, <laughs> along with our decision. <laughs> we could put it in the town court next year. Yeah. Good idea. Good one. All right. Any other comments on town meeting? Uh, yeah, I have another one. Um, just kind of policy guidance about um, feelings with all the people having the booths, and if you're feeling it's campaigning or not. More and more people are soliciting. Um, more and more people are asking me, can they have tables? Can they sell stuff? Can they do stuff? Are you hearing complaints or feeling awkward having it all there along the side? Does it need to be moved out in like um, that area right where the middle school office is? So it's not in the polling place. Do you think it's fine to leave it as it is? I think it's nice to have more people. I didn't walk the back row, honestly. Sorry, I got busy with the business of it. But who, who are the, the entities on the long back wall? Library, right? conservation. The yeah. Spanish, I thought the Spanish trip soccer team was up there selling stuff for their Spanish Yeah, so um, soccer was selling food, the library, but then the library is wanting to, they were selling stuff, not just information. Oh, I didn't. Um, <laughs> like E equals MC squared had a booth, but they're on the ballot as an agenda item. Is it campaigning? Yeah. Is it not? Um, Mrs. Randall was selling bandanas for lacing up for cancer, the dog bandanas, the Girl Scouts selling cookies. Um, Conservation Commission was there. The other youth center was there with information. Um, solid Waste District. I think the issue that me and Sarah talked about is, is something that's on a ballot and it's within the polling area. Shouldn't be there. And that, that makes it confusing for Sarah when she's trying to explain to people, hey, you can't be here because it's a polling area, but the other person is there. So we've just been trying to kick this around. I don't know that there's a good answer yet. And, and just one of the things I threw out was, well, we have this big open area. Could we move everything in there? It's kind of handy to have it all mm -hmm. within the gym. Mm -hmm. But realistically, if there's somebody that's requesting funds on the ballot, is that that campaign has been the polling area. So you're talking about everybody on the appropriations list? I mean, if you get really technical, the library gets money from a yeah. conservation right. commission, get, you know, all of them. But is that so, considered the polling area? You know, because out here you've got people campaigning across the street, you know? 
holding their signs up. Right. That's closer. I think, that's a I think if, well, no, they're outside the building. Yeah. And yeah. there's lines. Yeah. To, yeah. Some of the, I mean, some of the groups were just information. We're not asking. They weren't asking for money at their, at their table. Just mm -hmm. here, here we are. It's information. Yeah. I think if we put them out in the other room, nobody will go out. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm. I really don't want to break status quo. They won't disappear. I don't want to make people uncomfortable with them being. Did you have you gotten feedback that people were uncomfortable? I have not. That's why I'm asking. Oh. Okay. You have. Have you? It might be nice to have them separated. That the ones that are there for informational purposes, and then you have the ones that are doing fundraising, so that they're not all squabbled together. I don't know how it was organized. I didn't walk through. Sorry. But. Honestly, it's kind of a free for all because I can't. I have to be opening the polls here. Got other stuff to do. Um, mm -hmm. as they're setting up there. So I block off the um, informational one. I block off the food, which is selling, but so there's food and they can have access to the power. Um, and I usually stick the Girl Scouts in that corner, but the rest of them I just say, go at it. And you know, okay. They're texting me the night before, can I have a table? So it's, it's something to think about, you know, yeah. just in case it's ever brought up, because it, you know, it could potentially be there's, there's campaigning within the polling place. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I had a point. Is I just wanted to tell Sarah what a great job she did mm. with everything. Yes. Awesome. It was, it was nice that having the course there and Alan playing and the um, script was really good. I realized for myself, though, I had the budget book and I had this, but I didn't have, I forgot my town meeting report. Mm. So personally for me, I was like, I needed to have it there. Yeah. I grabbed one from the Yeah, <laughs> raise your hand. <laughs> I thought I had everything I needed. Does anybody else have anything for town meeting recap? No. Next. I think it'll be addressed when we have the moderator next time. Okay. <laughs> Approve and sign highway financial plan. This is the financial plan that we need to submit to the state on an annual basis. It just kind of justifies that we're spending enough to justify the $293,000 that they give us from highway aid, which we're well over and exceed that too. The other thing that this does, I think, uh, we ever had a disaster, and we talked a bit about this before. The bottom total amount, we would have to exceed that 10% 10, 10 of that to be able for state funding. So that's the other piece of that. State, so, state funding or federal reimbursement? This is, so this is just a, this would never, let's say we lost the car, mm -hmm. would, would not rise to the level of a federal RC declaration. So they, they base that on what your annual budget is okay. for, for where they, you know, say that they can provide state disaster. A for you that kind of that one time event. Yep. Okay. Do you need a motion? You think yeah. you have a signature page? There is a page going around. Yeah. There's a. Do you need a motion or not? Yes, yes. please. Sorry. Make a motion to approve the annual financial plan for town highways. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, utilize the fire building fund. That's new things. Sean? So we still have money that we used uh, the other part for to get our extractor and dryer. Um, but our gas meters are about uh, 14, 15 years old, and we're putting in $600 worth of sensors often into them. That's just the time frame. Uh, they've lasted five, about five years longer than their lifespan really is. So when we do that, we're looking at upgrading from a four gas to a five gas just because of the carcinogens with all of the new types of like vinyls and stuff out there. So when we're done a burning building or you get CO call, it gives you one more avenue to look at. Um, we're also looking at putting in a um, calibration center, which will actually bring down costs later on. Right now, calibration of them is done by hand. So if you open up the gas too much or whatever at $315 a bottle, it gets very expensive. We're buying about eight bottles a year. Um, according to MSA, we can knock that down to about three bottles a year. 
And it also will keep track of all the calibration in the computer. So if there's ever, ever a legality issue, it will it will be documented. It's not hand put in. It's automatic put in from the docking station. And we can also plug the uh, meter in. So if we have a call and the meter reads, has readings of you know 35 or higher when it activates, we can just plug it in. And then we just put in the address. So it'll keep track of where that address was, what the readings were. It'll take it right off the meter. Um, they are required to be um, calibrated after every time that they go off. So at 35 parts per million, once they go off, they have to be recalibrated. They also have to be calibrated no matter what, every 30 days. So there's a lot of calibration and a lot of uh, place for this gas where we could save on that to actually make up for upgrading to the five gas meters. Um, it's about $9,200. The association did do a coin drop. So we raised almost $2,000 for these. So I would like to take, there's 7,900 and uh, Yeah, I, I'd like to, there's $7,949.65 in the other unassigned um, fire building reserve fund. That was going to be reserved for if we build on and put an addition on the fire department, which we're not going to do anymore. I'd like to re recommend that we exhaust that and transfer all that money to get what Sean needs and close that fund out. Doesn't make sense to leave 50 bucks in there, you know? Sounds good to me. Questions? So what, what kind of a um, savings do you see coming back? Well, I see probably, you know, four to five bottles of gas at $315. Um, we also aren't going to have to spend the money on the sensors either because these will come with 10-year warranties. And they're guaranteeing the sensors are, so, are better than the old ones. Um, so much technology with the upgrade. So I see the savings. You know, is it going to be significant? Maybe, maybe not, but probably at least fifteen hundred dollars a year. But they also, they also explained to us when they came and demoed them that they should last a lot longer than fifteen years. But we knew what the other ones were going into it when we bought them. We bought cheap ones. You know, that was the money that we had at the time. So, and they've done their job. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I make motion that we. Allow him to have the money to do that with. Utilize that fund. Yes. yes. Is there a second? <clears throat> second. Any further discussion? If we could just have the total fund, because I know we need that. Seven thousand nine hundred forty-nine dollars and sixty-five cents. Is that what you said? That's what. That's exactly yeah. what I heard. <laughs> and, and then close out that fund. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Next, old business. Do we have any old business? Mm, hearing none. Approve the warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. TA report. Just Dan. a few things. Um, the April 8th meeting and we've had this discussion before, is also the night of the village meeting. And I know in the past that we've scheduled this and you guys have wanted to attend yeah. the village meeting. So, and the next day is a school election on April the 9th. So I would like to move this select board meeting to April the 10th, if that works for everybody. Wednesday. I won't, I won't be here. <clears throat> I won't be here. You won't? I ain't gonna be on beach. <laughs> I'm going to be in Mexico. Uh, I'll be in Florida. <laughs> we'll get out three that week anyway, so <laughs> um, we'll have to keep that agenda pretty short. Our, what time does the village meeting start? Uh, 6.30. I can make that one. I think. We can do it at 5.30. <clears throat> do you want me to go check? Maybe. <coughs> you know, we right can, we can move the meeting out. Right. Yeah, if we want to start, five thirty. Move the regular meeting to five or five thirty, yeah. something like that. If there's only going to be three of you here anyway. I, I, can, can, be here I can be here. I can be here. I'm not leaving till the tenth. So okay. I, so if we still did the eighth, but started the meeting early. Can you guys? What time can you do? Five or five thirty. What time? Five. Let's do five. That, that gives. That, if there's anything that comes up for me between now and then, yep. I have to put on the agenda. 
then, then we can get it done. That way you guys can get to the five o'clock. Five o'clock. Oh, so awesome. One more, one night. Five o'clock <laughs> on the eighth. Five o'clock on the eighth. And that'll be where? That'll have to be upstairs here. <laughs> okay. Or, yeah, I mean, does. is that village trustees? We you could that's probably that's have it here. Here. because it's set up sort of just like yeah, this. Still do it here. Yeah. Okay. You just have to be out by <laughs> six fifteen. So we're doing our regular select board meeting on that day at five o'clock. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Okay. And the village meeting is going to be here yes, 630. at six thirty, and we're we're attending that. I know in the past there's been discussion that because we, we have select board meetings at night, we couldn't, yeah. we couldn't attend both. And I, I just remember that discussion in past years, and I thought we had a chance to talk about it. Yeah, I wanted to come. Yeah. If you're not a village resident, you won't be able to, you won't be able to vote on anything. You right. can't speak unless you get permission. Okay. Right. You can attend. Okay. Thank you. Um, this week, uh, we'll post a note of, va notice of vacancy. You know, Charlie MacArthur is officially out of his position now. So we'll have an open list of positions. So if anybody knows anybody would like to fill that slot, um, the select board will be leading that at some point in time. But we'll give a notice of vacancy out for that. How is Abby doing? Abby's doing great. I thought she might. Yeah, she's doing great. She really is. Good. So, yeah, she's she's just doing great. We're loading her up on classes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so sure, much. So. There's so much for listers. I'm a little jealous. There's not as much classes for. Town clerk. For, or other positions. Administration, yeah. It's great Good. what's out there. Yeah. I mean, it's been, been a really, really hard learning curve for her. I mean, it's been a lot for her to learn. And she's, you know, she, 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 she's she, smart. She's smart. She really is. She's doing a great job for us. Right? And then lastly, I want to thank everybody for town meeting, too. Um, you have a lot of work. You know, realistically, Tina starts town meeting budget in September. So for us, it's you know it's, it's kind of a six-month cycle to get there, and it just all comes together. And you know, Sarah's been working great on trying to say, all right, what do we really need to do, and, and kind of doing that. But it, it takes a lot of effort for us to get there, working through the budget and getting everything done. So uh, I just want to thank everybody. <coughs> There's just a lot that goes to making that all happen. So um, I just want to just give my thanks for that. I think all your work makes us look good. Yes. But next year I realized I don't have to wear a tie because most people didn't wear that. Chris did. I did not. <laughs> but I wear a suit every year. I wear a suit every year. Yeah. 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 I thought it was more amusing because Dave was a dick tell me I didn't have to. <laughs> not much of a tie guy. You have to coordinate with Dan now. Yeah. Uh, blazer. Any questions for Dan? Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. Select board concerns. Chris. Uh, I think I'm good. Just echo the uh, sentiments around town meeting. Judy. I have to echo the same thing Chris said about town meeting being so well organized and it went off very well. Yeah. Brian. I think town meeting went very well. Thank everybody for the help. And I think there might be some potholes out there, but other than that. <laughs> I know. I would, I've mentioned that the last, every meeting last month. So you I think know, I, and they were out out. last Tuesday, actually yeah. last Monday and Tuesday, so I met. So, I did um, see that. Town meeting morning, they were. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they were the, down the day before, <laughs> you know, the morning Monday, by the library. By the library. So, so, so they're um, all the way down through the stove. They didn't go that way, all that way, did they? No, we didn't. Uh, they're they're awful awesome. this year. Yeah. 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 It's it's good. Next, and, and the sad news on that note is mud season starts Thursday. So <laughs> Thursday. You said it's scheduled? Yeah. <laughs> when, it's, when it's 50 degrees and sunny. Yeah. Oh, and it was bad this weekend. Yeah. With just a little. Eric. How about that? And I just had the same comment. Went great, but I really miss having buckwheat there. We were ready for a minute. I know. That's what I missed. <laughs> I was going to call him up. <laughs> for any of the... For any of the, the uh, uh, rustling of the feathers that he does, Buckwheat always gets people to come to the microphone. He does. That is a, a, a trade off. So he comes at us with some tough stuff. Sometimes they're not in the question form, they're just accusatory. But uh, it gets people the gracie ice. And I, I like that. That's right. That happens because. That we need. I want. I want more questions at town meeting. I want them to ask. We have a lot of money we're talking about, and very few taxpayers are going to vote on it. I want those questions to come out. 
That's right. <clears throat> I agree. All right, that's all I have. Other business. Employee relations, possible executive session. Are you, are you still doing that? Yes. yes. Yes, we are. You'd think I'd have it memorized by now. <laughs> Take a motion we uh, go to executive session to discuss appointment, employment, or evaluation of a public officer or employee under the provisions of Title I, Section 313, 3A3 of the Law Statutes to include Dan Lemley. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Dan. So far. 